Each year, the University presents awards to those individuals who have made a ma major contributions or who have earned distinction in their field. It therefore gives me very great pleasure indeed to call upon Dr. Rachel Dickinson to present Sue Andy OBE for the award of Doctor of Arts. Vice Chancellor, I have the honour to present Suandi OBE, poet, artist, performer, activist, and champion. Born in Hume, Suandi's Manchester gave her a base. Starting her professional life as a writer for Culture Wood in 1985, she simultaneously joined Black Scribe, Manchester's first black women's poetry collective. It was clear from the beginning that her work is about building community and that she will not be tied down to one form, one art, one way. Not satisfied with the landscape of British culture in the 1980s, she looked to the points of intersection, where many might cross without notice, as well as to the corners where shadows lay thick and uninviting. And she illuminated, drawing attention. Through her work, key themes emerge, speaking if not shouting for the unheard, celebrating the unseen and questioning the accepted histories. Of particular focus are the lives of women and the experience of black Britain. In one of Swandi's most famous works, The Story of M, she celebrates the life of her mother, a Liverpudlian of Irish descent who marries a Nigerian man and raises her son and daughter in mid 20th century Britain. Although racism is present throughout, it is not the focus limitation of life. As Suandi has said in an interview, I am constantly pushing against the barrier of racism in my writing, but it is cloaked in humor and the celebration of humanity in all its shapes, color, and laughter. The focus is on her extraordinary ordinary mother and her success against all barriers of prejudice and miseducation to raise her children to see beyond cultural expectations defined by class or race. Children, as stated in the work, who can grab a future to escape the life that was destroying. The story of them debuted in 1994, has been performed across the globe and is now on the A-level English syllabus. Alongside poetry and performance, Suandi is a librettist. Her opera, Mary Seacole, opened at Covent Garden before touring. Mary Seacole was another extraordinary black woman. Of Jamaican descent, she, like Florence Nightingale, tended to the wounded British soldiers of the Crimean War. Unlike Nightingale, the War Office refused her help. She was required to raise her own funds and raise them she did, and she is now recognized as a true British hero. Thus, Suandi continues her work, a voice, a challenge to accepted, unquestioned norms, an artist educator. Her work is woven into the fabric of Manchester, in 2011, she created a series of metal discs inscribed with words from her poems. These are cemented into the Manchester Ship Canal walkway on the quay side leading to the Lowry Arts Centre in Salford, forming a piece of landmark poetics. When you walk along this route, you enter into her poem, becoming part of it in your movements through it and in the connections you make between the words she offers. She empowers you and turns you into a poet collaborating with her. 
Her work builds, cements, and achieves community. Personal success has not altered her outlook. It has simply expanded her horizon of influence as freelance cultural director of the National Black Arts Alliance based here in Manchester. Suwandi strives to fulfill the four aims of the Alliance, to redress the balance, to archive for prosperity, to build a legacy and to establish collaborations. There is a marked similarity between these aims and those of the Manchester Metropolitan University. Through our breadth of programmes and dedication to provide education to all, we strive to redress the historic imbalance of the educated elite. Our library and special collections house an essential repository of Manchester's history, archived for its future, and our new poetry library, which will include the work of Suandi, adds to this. We have been building our legacy for over 100 years and will continue. And as we do, we are constantly looking for new ways to collaborate and celebrate the success that comes from bringing people and ideas together. Manchester Metropolitan University is deeply proud and honoured to celebrate the life and success of Suwandi, one of our own. I'll end, if I may, with just a few lines from the story of M. So, if any of you think that all mixed-raced people grow up confused, Without identity, think again. I work in schools, and often the cocky lad sat at the back asks me where I come from. I answer, Manchester. Through her significant contribution to arts and culture, in particular to the black arts sector and within the Northwest, she presents a worthy role model for Manchester Metropolitan University's staff and students. Vice Chancellor. I present Suwandi for the award of a degree of Doctor of Arts of the Manchester Metropolitan University, Honoris Causa. By virtue of my authority as Vice-Chancellor, I admit Suwandi to the degree of Doctor of Arts, Honoris Causa. Hello everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I was advised to make notes. Obviously the thinking is that poets are like academics who just waffle on and on. But don't worry, this is large print. Due to the horror of seeing myself recently on video wearing glasses, I thought there's no way that's going to happen again. <laughs> anyway, today I'm channeling Megan's pastor. I'm here now and only the heaven can stop me. My local primary school was known as the League of Nations because of the multiple heritages of the students. It wasn't a hippie colony of love, but the teachers respected our cultural identities. However, at my first day at secondary school, I was pulled out the class line, marched to the headmaster's office, where, not even lifting his head, he told me, I was the first coloured child in his school, and he could make sure I would be the last. Now, this is when I took my first steps as a warrior. I don't want you to think that I was an innocent child. I was brazen, obstinate, difficult, sassy, not very honest, cute, very cute, but a kid who wasn't stupid, but racism wasn't something that came into my everyday life. Now suddenly here I was in institutional racism. Yet still I breezed along in my sassiness. For a long while I was a frock, a dress. I bought one every Saturday and I hit the clubs in town. I expect it was my persona that made my bosses in social work tell me that I needn't apply for a certain of training because I was aggressive enough. Funnily, I wasn't allowed to keywork any of the black clients because I hadn't been on the race awareness course. So no surprise when Lancaster University put me forward for an arts and humanities research, 
that one assessor wrote that mixed-race children raised by white families have little knowledge of a black experience. What makes this candidate think she's fit to do the job? Still, the arts opened the international world to me. Let me brag. I've worked across most of the major cities of Central Europe, free island and our occupied territories, and with the same respect, the colonised countries of Scotland and Wales, Brazil, India, Salvador, Jamaica, Trinidad, Kenya, Ghana, Indonesia, Malaysia, and North America, where always I endure the strictest security checks. I wonder why. Maybe that is why in Singapore, I found myself working in prison, though I did say that I was an expert in Shakespeare so I could get the gig. But not bad, though, for the daughter of a mum whose travel was limited to Blackpool, Stockport, and New Brighton, so she got her first passport for France in the late 40s. Though my not fully literate father, who could make himself understood in many languages, had sailed the world. Now I am hobnobbing, talking, laughing, and cussing with people from all walks of life. I've even had dinner at the Washington Embassy, and though it was a different ambassador, I'm sure we've reached the same conclusion on Trump. I've worked at Windsor Castle, major state houses in Europe, and attended a couple of your royal garden parties. While it would be easy to say I've been very, very lucky, I understand that the actor Stephen Graham, line of duty, said to Jodie Comer, Killing Eve, when she used luck to describe her career success, and I paraphrase Stephen's word, he said, that is so working class to deny the hard work and talent of her craft. Personally speaking, even when nervous as hell, I have never let anybody tell me no. When I was offered the libretto of Mary Seacole, I said yes, even though I didn't know what a libretto was, and I couldn't spell the word, so I couldn't look it up. But when I stood in Covent Garden watching black folks take their seats, I can't tell you how wonderful I felt. That was the same year I got my gong, and I'm just gonna say, I've been to events where I've been introduced to Sue Andy, Obi. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was the same year I got my gong. And that's what we called the OBE. My friend Scott, who's English, called it an outstanding black example, and I really like that. Whereas Pavinda, my other mate, who's Ugandan Asian, called it other buggers' efforts. And it's true, there's nothing anyone, you, I, achieves without the support of other people. For me, it begins with every member of National Black Arts Alliance and the work we have done across all the art forms. Across Manchester and extending nationally, top brass directors, city councillors, regular struggling artists have rarely refused to give me their time and I hope I've always reciprocated. And that's important for me because I have no blood family living. I have made mistakes, huge mistakes. I have been clumsy, difficult, upset people, many to whom I have never been able to apologize. And I have failed, but failure can be a good learning experience. Regular struggling artists, that's not me being patronizing. When you work freelance, there is no holiday pay, sick pay, pension investment. Debt is something that can stay in your life, all of your life. And for me, it's a 24 seven companion. Yet still and all, I am here, looking at all of you in your dodgy caps and gowns, puffed up and chuffed up with yourselves, as of course you should be. But the debt I've just spoken of is not just monetary, if you forget that, then the future will never be totally fulfilling. We stand here on the shoulders of so many others, parents and siblings, if you are lucky to have them, teachers, lecturers, and the army of people from shopkeepers to road sweepers. They all enable us to move forward in our lives. Those who fought in World War I and II, enslaved Africans, all our ancestors, 
the suffragettes, the list is endless. So best I end here, but you can call me sexist, for my last words are for all the sisters in this room. It was given to me on a card by someone's husband, actually. <laughs> so remember this, Carla, well-behaved women rarely make history. I hope you all make brilliant history tomorrow. And I thank you for giving me this memory today.